Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak again. I thought I'd do a follow-up video because it seems like I get a lot of people talking about my last video, how it's nothing but inert mum. Well, you couldn't be more wrong if you tried. First of all, when I lifted up that plant, ammonia raised in my tank. So it was ammonia being produced. Let's try to understand something here about how the nitrogen cycle works. That plant was a catch-all, no different than a filter or no different than a uh, sock that you use, no different than canister filter, hang on the back filter, no different than any mechanical filter we use. It's trapped all the fecal matter, it trapped organics into it, and what's going to happen when something traps organic or organics stay around too long. The nitrogen cycle is going to happen, correct? Now you're going to have what? You're going to have the nitrogen cycle happening with heterotrophic bacteria starting to multiply to break down the organics. Okay, that's exactly what was happening underneath the Monte Carlo. So you're producing ammonia. Now the Monte Carlo can only use so much ammonia so now you're going to produce nitrites and you're going to produce nitrates. Since the Monte Carlo is not going to use the nitrates because it has plenty of ammonia right where the roots are, what happens to those nitrates? They get back, put back in solution. Just because I tested my water and I only had nitrates between one and two parts per million doesn't mean as somebody else uses this plant, their nitrates may start going skyrocketing and they won't know why. Underneath that plant, though, that's exactly what's going to happen as you start collecting organic matter. It's nothing but biology, what that we're talking here. We all know that. Underneath that Monte Carlo, you are going to be breaking down all that waste, which is organic matter, into nitrates eventually. Because the plants aren't going to suck up every little morsel of ammonia being produced by the heterotrophic bacteria. Some of it is going to be changed in the nitrogen cycle. There's other people making comments that fish create uh, urine or urea. They don't. Fish don't. I see this on a video with a guy who owns an aquarium store. No. Let's get it straight right now. Fish produce ammonia. There is exception to the rule. There are sharks and rays, and they produce urea just like mammals do. Otherwise, fish make ammonia. They expel it through their gills. They expel it through their vent. Their waste is ammonia. It is not urea. They don't make urea. Let's get that straight. I know that that is wrong information that the guy gives on YouTube video. Owning an aquarium store, you would think he would know better, but apparently he doesn't. They create ammonia. So the waste that's coming from the fish is going down in there. Their fecal matter is going down in there. Remember, that's all ammonia. Okay, they don't create the same waste as a mammal does. They create more ammonia than anything. Now that plant starts collecting all this organic matter, we all know the nitrogen cycle. That organic matter has to be attacked by heterotrophic bacteria. Once it's attacked, it is going to start breaking it down. Now, it's not going to break it down instantly to inert mum. During this process, more and more is being added to that Monte Carlo and getting stuck in there, and it is going to start producing more nitrates. Nitrates that Monte Carlo is not going to use, especially if it's exposed to all that ammonia from everything being broken down. So those nitrates are going to go back in solution and that is going to raise your nitrates. In my tank my nitrates weren't high because of the filtration system I use it. But I'm not talking about my system, I'm talking about overall everybody's system. What is the difference between all this detritus and everything collected underneath that plant than let's say a filter sock? What is the difference? There is none. Filter sock collects all the waste in it. What's the difference between that plant and, let's say, a canister filter? Once again, there is no difference. Canister filter collects all that garbage out of the water, 
and it stays in there and what happens it starts making the nitrogen cycle no different than the plant it's no different to canister filter it's going to start the nitrogen cycle what happens with this plant compared to hang on the back filter same scenario so what the plant is doing is collecting all this waste and we really don't want this waste to be collected in any one particular spot there's another thing that filthy dirt that collects underneath there in case you haven't read anything and go find out there's a little thing called TB tuberculosis that you can get from fish tanks from dirty filthy fish tanks you have all that filth and dirt collecting underneath that Monte Carlo I don't know about you but if you don't recognize that you have TB from a fish tank and you don't tell your doctor in time the sores that start developing on your arms and hands it's going to take months and months and months to cure that TB from the fish tank so you don't want your fish tanks to become dirty filthy cesspools of bacteria that's going to start collecting in that underneath there there's bad bacteria that's going to collect underneath there you're going to start collecting uh, parasites underneath there you can also start collecting so much bad underneath there hiding underneath there because you don't know what's there it could be there for months you can start your fish could start developing uh, such as Oscars or your discus hole in the head disease uh, because of the filth unclean water and you won't know why your water your redox will start dropping this becomes a cesspool of garbage underneath that plant because within a few months look at what it collected I've been having fish tanks for over 50 years and that is the dirtiest I have ever seen a fish tank in my life and whether it's been at universities whether it's been in a lab whether it's been at home I have never ever experienced a fish tank that filthy dirty within that amount of time as it did with that Monte Carlo never in my life have I seen such filth come when I lifted up that and it also the ammonia level in the tank raised once I lifted that up because all that ammonia that was being trapped underneath there came in in the water column but I didn't care because I was changing the water anyhow and it didn't make any difference once I got everything back together so if people are defending this plant that's fine but show me the scientific proof of what you were saying. What you were looking at, it looks like it could be mum, but it's also all kinds of garbage. It's also all kinds of parasites in it. It's also all kinds of bacteria, bad bacteria that you don't want that's hidden in there. No different than a canister filter, no different than the filter sock that everybody beats up that it's nothing but a nitrate producer, no different than hang on the back filter the only difference is you don't know to clean it you can't clean it unless you're going to destroy the plant or do it, did what I did and pull it up <clears throat> so I wouldn't take that to the bank and be telling people that oh that's just mom and it's perfectly safe and inert it is not perfectly safe and it is not just inert. Remember, there is fish waste. There are there is heterotrophic bacteria compete with autotrophic bacteria for food. They compete for space, and they compete for oxygen. Okay, they can even outcompete the autotrophic bacteria for all those. Wind up making nothing but a bunch of ammonia going back into solution if they overdo and since they can overpopulate the autotrophic bacteria growing underneath that plant so what you have is a nitrate producer the plants not going to use it remember if you're producing ammonia the plants not going to look at the nitrates it's not a food source that it wants it will take the ammonia and let the nitrates go right back in solution if you can't get that garbage out of there remember that's organic it's got to be broken down now no one said oh it's mum well how did it become mum had a trophic bacteria had to break it down the plant didn't break it down it had to be some sort of bacteria breaking it down what happened to the ammonia the plant didn't suck up a hundred percent of the ammonia okay other bacteria had to start attacking that ammonia and make nitrites and then th another bacteria had to attack it and make nitrates remember 
that's sitting on top of the gravel. It's not in the plenum. It's getting lots and lots of oxygen. There's lots and lots of water circulation going on top of it while it's trapping all that detritus and all that fish waste and rotting leaves. Don't forget, that's all organic matter getting caught in there. It's all got to be broken down by bacteria. The plant is not going to break it down. So you're now compounding your problem in your aquarium by having a plant that has such a tight matrix of roots that you can't clean it and it just becomes another well, it just becomes another mechanical filter, doesn't it? That's it. It becomes another mechanical filter. No different than the filter sock. No different than the canister filter. No different than the other gravel filter that everybody beat up and said it was a lousy filter. That's what you have here. You have a highly oxygenated water going through it. And you have the nitrogen cycle being performed. And it's just creating more nitrates for you. The plant is not going to utilize 100% of the ammonia. The bacteria is going to also attack it and make nitrates. And since we all know that plants do not look for nitrates if ammonia is available, where does the nitrates go? goes back in solution. Just because my tank only showed one to two parts per million of nitrates, what about the guy or the, or the woman out there who's not using an oxyfiltration system or who's not using a plenum? And they just put this plant and it grows like mine did and it grows to be all over the bottom of their tank and now they have this cesspool that can literally give you TB because it could be so filthy or literally give your discus or your Oscars hold the head disease and you won't know why and you're going to start treating your tank with all kinds of chemicals not knowing the big huge cesspool you have underneath that Monte Carlo because you didn't clean it and then you go around telling people oh it's just mum it's inert it is did you do any scientific research I mean I'll, I'll be more than happy to listen to somebody who says hey look I, I did it for six months. I tested it out. It was just mom. It was inert. There was no ammonia. There was no night. I'll be more than happy to listen to you if you're going to do experiments on it and test it out. All I know is this is a relatively new plant to the hobby. It's very, very tightly weaved. The roots are. The root system is. And because of that, it's very, very hard to try to get in there and clean it out. What we do in our fish tanks, we have all kinds of water and, and, and moving. We constantly have, look at all your planted tanks. They ex put extra power heads in. They get the detritus up. They get the stuff out into our filters. And here you've got this big, huge mount of Monte Carlo or baby tears just trapping all this garbage, putting it down in there. They got this high oxygen, amount of high oxygen flowing through there because it'll flow through through the tank. What do you think is going to happen? Come on, people, what do you really think is going to happen? Heterotrophic bacteria is going to start breaking it down. And you're going to start having ammonia problems. You're going to have to start having nitrites. And you're going to start having nitrate problems. And you won't even know why you have all these nitrates. Plants, like I said, will not use nitrites and nitrates until ammonia is exhausted. It will just about have to become exhausted. I think something down to like 30% of the exhaustion is is what it is in other words if you have 100 percent ammonia when it gets down to about 30 percent then plants may start using the nitrates and start converting it back into ammonia that's what they do they convert it back into ammonia in fact like i told you in other videos crips for some reason they take it into their cells the nitrates they don't know how to use the nitrates because they never learn and they just rot from the nitrates that stick in their cells so before everyone says, oh, it's just mum, then if it was just mum, why did I, my ammonia levels rise when I lifted up the Monte Carlo? Because there was all that ammonia in there being produced by the heterotrophic bacteria. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been in this hobby a long time. I've worked in ponds that were man-made. I worked for St. Louis. I did work for Shaw, Shaw's Garden there. And they have ponds there. I worked inside those ponds and I became sick because they were so dirty and so filthy that I had to be hospitalized because of the bacteria and all the different parasites that were in those ponds. And I got a little careless and I was in there doing some research and I got sick. 
this is exactly what's going to happen to this. I'm not going to risk getting TB because my tank is filthy dirty and I don't realize it. Maybe you'll take the risk, but I'm not going to do it. So if that plant's going to harbor all kinds of gunk underneath it, and it's just going to be piling up and piling up. You don't want that. You want to get that out of your tank, out of the system. You don't want it to be part of the system. And that's what that plant was doing. So if I offended anybody because you love Monte Carlo and you think it's so great, this is a new plant to the hobby. You're better off doing what we used to do years ago by using, you know, like your baby swords and stuff like that that are more open where you can actually wave your hand over it and get the mum and everything back into solution so your mechanical filters can pick it up. No mechanical filter can pick up what landed in that Monte Carlo until I finally lifted up the whole thing. Mechanical filters can't remove it. So it's going to stay in solution and it's going to keep making more and more nitrates and keep making more and more ammonia. The plant can only use so much ammonia before it is either going to go back in solution or another bacteria is going to attack it for another food source. So I hope we got this real clear. Fish, number one, do not make urine. They make ammonia. Number two, you don't know what's growing underneath there. And if you want to take the risk and you want to get TB or you want to wind up getting your fish sick and you don't know why, that's totally up to you. I'm not going to risk it. If I see the plant does it again, I'm pulling it. I will not use that plant. It is not really then meant for aquarium use. If you feel offended by what I'm saying, then give me some scientific proof that what I'm saying is wrong. Just don't be saying, oh, it's this, and you have no proof. Give me proof. That's all I'm asking. Give me proof of what you were saying. Give me some scientific proof. Give me some research you've done. Give me proof to me that what I am saying is not true. And I'll be more than happy to tell everybody I was wrong and you were right. But without scientific proof, nothing to prove what you were saying. And I know the nitrogen cycle. And I saw how dirty it was. That's the dirtiest, filthiest I have ever had a fish tank in 50 years. I've never seen a tank that dirty and that much dirt collected in that amount of time. I've seen ponds get dirty, but ponds are a thousand of times dirtier than aquariums. I've never seen an aquarium get quite that dirty. So until next time, this is Dr. Kevin Novak. Happy tanking.